I'm going to discuss the key differences between transmitters and switches in instrumentation. I'll talk about what setups you're likely to find them in an industry, as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each device. First off, if you're not sure what transmitters are, then you're going to want to stop this video and first check out my video on transmitters. I'll leave the link in the description below. In industry, there are process variables that we need to monitor, control and react to, such as pressure, flow, temperature and level. Depending on how we want our control systems to react to these process variables, will determine what type of instrumentation we want to use. Most often, our inputs into control systems that detect these process variables will be in the form of transmitters and switches. A transmitter gives an analog variable output in response to varying process conditions. A pressure transmitter may be ranged 0 to 100 bar, where it gives a 4 to 20 milliamp current output to our control system in response to the pressure input. This 4 to 20 milliamp signal is then interpreted by the control system and can action different events, such as indication of process variable, an alarm or action when the process variable is over or under a certain set point, or altering a valve position on plant to control the process variable. A switch, on the other hand, is a digital device. Instead of giving variable outputs like a transmitter, it can only give fixed output states in response to a varying input. Let's look at an electronic pressure switch. The switch will have a set point, let's say 50 bar. The switch will open or close an electrical contact depending on if the pressure is above or below this value. The electrical contact within the switch will be changing the signal, usually 24 volts DC, back to the control system. Electrical switches are usually described as normally open or normally closed. The normally refers to the condition of the switch in ambient conditions. If we were to say our 50 bar pressure switch has a normally open contact, then at ambient pressure, the switch contact will be open or unable to conduct electricity. When the pressure is above 50 bar, the switch will be closed or act as a conductor for the electrical current within the loop. When talking about the set point of a switch, it's important to know if this is set up to respond to a rising or falling process condition. Mechanical switches, such as in a pressure switch, will not open and close exactly at the same pressure set point. There will be a slight difference in pressure required to activate the switch than what is required to deactivate the switch. In our pressure switch example, we could have it to be set up to 50 bar rising, where any pressure higher than 50 bar will change the state of the switch. The switch may not go back to its original state until the pressure is say 45 bar falling. This is what we call hysteresis. The size of this hysteresis will depend on the range and instrument type of your switch, but it's worth bearing in mind when carrying out calibrations and testing. It's worth noting that instrumentation switches are not always electronic. We can also have hydraulic and pneumatic switches. A simple example of a pneumatic switch might be a level switch, where a high level in a vessel is detected by the switch, which allows air to flow through the switch to an audible air-driven horn to indicate the level vessel is high. Hydraulic switches may be used to drive shuttle valves in hydraulic operated logic, like those found in units that drive hydraulically operated valves. Now we've spoken about what a switch is and some of its uses, let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of each device over the other. Switch advantages. Simplicity. A switch is a simple device with less components than a transmitter. This makes them reliable, easy to test, and there is usually a cost benefit too. Control integration. Not all systems warrant the need for a PLC or controller infrastructure. Simple circuits such as pump discharge protection could be met with a switch. In this example, we could have a high pressure switch wired directly into the pump starter or control circuit that will kill the pump's electrical supply on high pressure. This again ties into the simplicity advantage. Switch disadvantages. Simplicity. What can be an advantage is also a disadvantage, and it all depends on the use case and requirements of your system. The biggest downfall of a switch is lack of functionality. A switch can only operate at a single set point. If you want different actions at different set points, say an alarm at 20 bar and a trip at 50 bar, 
then you would need multiple switches to carry this out. There's also no functionality with a switch to detect important conditions such as rate of change. The transmitter's advantages and disadvantages are really the reverse of the switch examples we've spoken about. The strength of transmitters is the functionality you gain. Being an analog device, it gives you the ability for your system to respond to a huge amount of process variables from a single device. Its limiting factors are normally cost related. To get full functionality out of the transmitter signal, your system needs a PLC to handle and process the analog signal. There is a halfway solution via the use of signal conditioners, such as trip amps, that may give you the required level of complexity for your system. I'll go over these devices in another video. I hope this quick video has given you some useful information on transmitters and switches. If you have enjoyed the video, then I really appreciate a like and comment, and remember to subscribe for future content like this.